of these men is responsible for setting off more than $50 million worth of fireworks. What is your name, please? My name is Art Brees. My name is Art Brees. My name is Art Brees. Only one of these men is the real Art Brees. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Johnny Carson, Dean Amaro, Sam Levinson, and Kitty Carlisle on to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Black Flag Insect Bomb. Kills flies and mosquitoes, then keeps on killing insects with its long-lasting action. Black Flag. Uh, incidentally, Tom Poston is opening tonight in Destry Rides Again, down at the Texas State Fair Musicals in Dallas, no less. And as our guest panelist tonight, we have with us our good friend, Sam Levinson. Sam, it's a joy to have you back. Nice to be here, man. Very nice to welcome you. All right, panel, let me ask you to open up your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along with me. I, Art Breeze, am a pyrotechnician and vice president of the largest fireworks display company in the world. I have probably set off more fireworks than any man alive since I started professionally when I was 15 years old. I travel 125,000 miles and handle some 200 displays each year. Tomorrow, as I do every Independence Day, I will be in charge of the American Legion show in the Los Angeles Coliseum, the largest Fourth of July fireworks display in the nation. Signed, Art Brees. Panel, <laughs> you just heard, as did I, these three gentlemen all claiming to be Art Brees, Fireworks expert extraordinary, and we we'll start this first round of questioning with our own particular fireball, Johnny Carson. Thank you, Bud. Uh, Mr. Brees, number two, uh, what is punk made of? <laughs> Nothing personal, I mean. Usually <laughs> I think of it as a little child. <laughs> no, number three, what, what uh, is, well, number two. I don't, I don't know, really. Number three, what, what is punk made punk, of? Punk, uh, I don't know what it's made of, it's, uh, we used to use it to light firecrackers. Number one? Well, it's a brownish substance about a foot long. It glows. It doesn't burn with a flame. And uh -huh. we used to use it to light firecrackers. Yeah. Don't you use it anymore? No, we don't. Uh, things change, don't they? <laughs> number two, what, what's a cherry bomb? <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know because... Number, uh, number three? Cherry bombs we don't make. At, uh, number one? We don't fool with that in our business. Right. <laughs> That's strictly commercial. I see. Dina. Uh, number two, how do you spell your last name? Uh, B-R-I-E-S-E. -E. Uh, number three, what, what are the ingredients of the, the smaller firecrackers, the ones that, that um, you know, the kids? The one the kids use, uh, we don't have anything to do with that. We make only large uh, outside displays. There, there's gunpowder used in those, the small ones. However, we have nothing to do with them as uh, from our manufacture or display of them. Uh, number two, uh, when, when you set them, how do you set them off, the big ones? What is the process? With a, a fuse. Pardon? <laughs> With a fuse. Uh, don't even need a match. Number one, a long <laughs> fuse or how? The, these big Roman candles that go with all the, the, the stars and things? Well, we set them off with what we call a port fire. Chemicals that uh, oxidize into a flame, or we set them off sometimes electrically. When they go off, there's Sam Levinson. Sam? Yeah. Aren't you guys too old to be playing with these things in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> I told you grow up at some time. Uh, let's take number one. I think I'm going to catch you. Uh, give me the chemical formula for uh, a, a medium-sized firework. What goes into it, number one? Well, there are a number of elements. We use the basic white sulfur powder, and we use shellac and red gum and ammonium, nitrates and uh, aluminum and magnesium. And a little iodine for the disaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything you want. Uh, number two, could you give me the, the chemical formula? Not that. I want the chemicals. 
potassiums, and come on, start naming all stuff. about like, just what he says, bariums and that. I, I talked to him already. Now you tell. Me. <laughs> Those like what he said? Yes. That's a good answer. <laughs> Kitty Carla. I wouldn't Uncle Martin, can you tell me what causes, what is, what is the name, why, where the name Terry, uh, no, Catherine Wheel comes from? The what wheel? A Catherine Wheel. Are you talking about the turning of the, yes. the wheel that turns around? Yes. We, we give that the name uh, merry-go-round. And that is a set piece that's on the ground and, and revolves from a number of gerbs. Thank you, number on. one. Can you tell me, number three, uh, what is the difference between fireworks indoors and outdoors? The big fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing them indoors. Oh, indoors, indoors. indoors. They're doing them here the indoors. Scale. In the Los Angeles Coliseum. If What's the difference? If you're going to use them indoors, they have to be a ground piece. <laughs> Outside, they can be aerial. What's the difference? Well, one's in the air and one isn't. That's about it. And it's time now to vote. So you've got to get your feet on the ground, know. panel. You never know. Get your feet on the ground and march your ballot, please, without consultation. Vote, if you will, for number one, number two, or number three. Of course, the team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Are we set, panel? Okay, Johnny, for whom did you vote? <laughs> I voted for number one. He seemed to know what punk was. <laughs> hey, anybody who knows what punk is can't be all bad. I'm one. <laughs> Dina, which one do you think is the real I'm one? I'm with John. I'm one. <laughs> yes, he seemed to know a great deal about this subject. I must say I don't, but he sounded extremely knowledgeable to me. Mm -hmm. He did. Okay. Uh, Sam. I'm with number two because he has the complexion of a man who's been playing with fire. <laughs> I think he knows more about it than he let on. He wouldn't give me the chemical answer, but I think he did it deliberately to fool me, and he ain't gonna. It's number two. Kitty. Well, I voted for number one. Number two couldn't possibly be the right one, Sam, because he didn't know what a cherry bomb is. And my son, Christopher Hart, is a demon with a cherry bomb. <laughs> so, and number three was a little hesitant, and number one gave all kinds of chemicals that go into the thing and gave a very good answer about the Catherine wheel, so I voted for number one. All right, let's see if we have our own particular pyrotechnics now as our explosion of truth emits at this point, or erupts, as the case may be, as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real expert with fireworks displays. So will the real Art Breeze please stand up? Oh. Oh! <laughs> I used to teach school. To me, they don't lie. <laughs> I know you, kid. I wish you could have seen your faces when that little square was out there. I'm glad I knew it was going to happen. I Kitty? thought I died. Number two. Wait, how come you don't know what a cherry bomb is? Due to the fact that uh, that is commercial type of fireworks, the only type of displays we put on are the big displays. You don't like play with them, in other words. That's right. right. <laughs> the soldier field and the orange bowl and the Coliseum all over America. Thank Thanks. you. Number one, you tell us your real name and what you really do. You got most of the votes. Well, I am Dr. Stanley Hahn, pastor of the First Baptist Church <laughs> of Dublin, Georgia. <laughs> I wish I knew what you were going to tell your congregation about all that lying you just did. <laughs> They're watching, bud. <laughs> They're watching this. <laughs> all right, number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Byron Elder. I'm with E.C. Bartlett Company. I'm a wholesale floor covering salesman. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, you did very well. For my efforts pulled the panel right down the line. You got the three of them there, Reverend. And uh, number two, sir, the winner got one. That means there were three incorrect at $250 each for a total, therefore, of $750 from Dristan and a gift package from the makers of Dristan of all their fine products. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Let's meet our next team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Leroy Ronalds. My name is Leroy Ronalds. My name is Leroy Ronalds. 
You follow along once again, panel, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Leroy Runnels, learned to swim when I was seven years old, and it's a good thing I did. Recently, I was swimming in Butler's Lake when three girls started to drown. I pulled out the oldest one first, then swam back and got the middle one. By this time, the littlest one had disappeared. I dove 10 feet to the bottom, found her, and brought her to shore where I applied artificial respiration and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing until she was revived. Because I saved three girls from drowning, the governor gave a party in my honor at the governor's mansion. Signed, Lee Roy Runnels. <laughs> Fine, bright, and shining young men this time, each one claiming to be Lee Roy Runnels, who saved three girls from drowning. And we'll begin this round with the proud mother of a fine son herself, Ms. Dina Merrill. <laughs> First of all, congratulations, boys, to whoever did it. I think that's just marvelous. Uh, number one, how, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Uh, where is Butler's Lake? In, uh, in the suburbs of Little Rock. Of Little Rock? Yes, I see. Uh, number two, what was the name of the governor that gave you this party? Governor Welch. Governor Welch? Uh, what state is that? Indiana. Oh, I see. His lake's in um, Indiana. <laughs> number three, where's your lake? Uh, my lake is in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, I see. Um, number three, have you had first aid training? Uh, well, a small amount at the pool that I took lessons at. I see. How did you learn artificial respiration? Go ahead, quickly. Well, uh, the instructor, along with the uh, swimming course, he taught us a little bit of that. Here Sam Levinson. That's good. Mm. Welcome, gentlemen, heroes. Says that you do dove down 10 feet. Number one, how did you know it was 10 feet? Well, we asked the owners of the While you were going down? <laughs> and, no. After uh, my grandmother called and asked if... Uh -huh. how and you number two, what is the best method for artificial respiration as recommended by the Red Cross these days? Well, you put your uh, um, hands on the girl's ribs and you push forward and bring her arms back and push forward. Make sure she drowned first. <laughs> uh, uh, number three, what did they serve at the party? At the party, what did they serve? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Saying it backwards is not the answer I want. <laughs> They served cake and ice cream and things like that, and just, just the regular stuff. You For a hero, cake. ice cream and cake? Well, at a party, the same stuff. You, oh, they had a lunch. Probably the paid to dive in. Did he? <laughs> Number one, how old were the girls? One was 15, one was 11, and one was 9. Number two, can you tell me how big the biggest one was? About 5, about 5'7". Five, and when you brought her into shore, did you use a, a, this system of life-saving where you keep the chin up, or how did you do it? I put my arm around her neck and brought her in and swam in. Thank you. <laughs> Johnny, uh, number three, uh, how, old are, how old are you? I'm 12 also. 12. Number two? 11. That's wonderful. I have an 11-year-old son who's learning to wave goodbye. <laughs> It's hello and not goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Mike can do it as the wall. Yes, and he's, <laughs> he's saved three. Uh, number, uh, number two, how many times uh, in the mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, respiration do you breathe into the victim's uh, mouth? How many times per minute? About seven or eight. Uh, number three? Well, that's about all the time we have, I'm afraid. Uh, <coughs> Bell lets us know that we have no further time to question, but time merely to mark our ballots. If you will do so now, panel, without consultation, Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Say when, when you're ready. Everybody set? Yeah. Okay. Now? Yeah, Johnny, for whom? I really haven't the slightest idea, bud. Uh, I don't know, one and three kind of look like brothers. I don't know why. Maybe it's the coats or something or the haircuts. But I voted for number one. Just to, just to guess. And Dina, which one did you select? Well, I voted for number one, too, Bud, not on, on the basis of any of the answers that the boys gave, because they all made sense, but because number one has a southern accent, and his name is Lee Roy, a double name, which is quite southern. So oh, I voted you're for right, him. you're right, you're Thanks. right. Robert E. Lee yeah. Roy. <laughs> uh, never thought of it. Dan, your vote, please. Because I voted for number one because I think that number three got a raw deal getting ice cream for rescuing girls. <laughs> And number two doesn't look the type. He's a handsome, delicate one. Number one looks like the guy who could drag three girls out all at the same time. 
<laughs> Jenny, which one did you vote for? Well, I hate to go against Sam, who uh, is a school teacher and is presumably knows boys, but number three in answering Sam added to the business about the ice cream and cake and said, well, there was a luncheon beforehand, and I think he knew more about the governor's party than the other so two. So he's an authority on food, but not Satan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've taken the big dive. Now hold your breath as we swim out from underwater with the truth in this particular episode, uh, this, this, determining which one of these gentlemen is the real young hero. And I think you will agree that he is that in every sense of the word. So will the real Lee Roy Runnels please stand up? <laughs> Congratulations, young man. On behalf of the panel, we're all mighty proud to have you on our show, believe me. Thank you. Let's find out about these other two now. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm Gil Hodges II, and I'm a student of Lady of Christians, Brooklyn, New York. I'm not too sure you heard him. He glossed over something, and I'm sure he's very proud of. He's Gil Hodges II, son of Gil Hodges I, who is the great baseball star of the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> and number three, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is David Elder, and I'm a student, and my father, Byron Elder, sat here and pretended to be the fireworks man. Oh! <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, have a great career as liars. Yes, sir. It just shows that lying runs in the blood. <laughs> it's called a blood lying, yes. <laughs> uh, you, I want to point out you did better than your father. You got one vote, he got none. But they got, they got three all together, and we only got one. I know. It does work out that way, not to your profit, because it means only one incorrect vote, of course, at $250 from Dristan and all the fine uh, Dristan products will be given to you on the way out. We thank you very much for being with us. We're proud of you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> now, panel, may I present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Adams. My name is Helen Adams. <laughs> My name is Helen Adams. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this final affidavit? I, Helen Adams, graduated from grammar school at the age of 14 and went to work. Five years later, I entered high school. I am now a kindergarten teacher. I hold a Bachelor of Science degree, a Master of Arts, and this year hope to complete work for my professional diploma in early childhood education. On May 2nd at the White House, President Kennedy presented me with an award for being selected the Teacher of the Year for 1961. Signed, Helen Adams. <laughs> Ladies, this time panel, each of whom claims to be Helen Adams, Teacher of the Year for 1961. And we'll begin this uh, round of questioning with our own Teacher Supreme, Sam Levinson. Uh, that sounds like a dessert, Teacher Supreme. <laughs> teacher Supreme. <laughs> uh, I'll start with number one. Uh, I'll try to catch you by keeping it in the trade. What does the name Froebel, Froebel, F-R-O-E-B-E-L, mean to you, if anything? Uh, it means um, kindergarten. Good. Uh, <laughs> number two, does Froebel mean anything else to you? It means kindergarten to me, too. Uh-huh. And number three? Nothing else. Nothing at all. Uh-huh. Uh, let's start again with number one. Uh, name two courses that you had to take to be a kindergarten teacher. Um, early childhood education, which was reading, and also science in early childhood education. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, uh, who is the authority in uh, the psychology of these preschool kids? Name one of the texts. I would say the authority would be uh, Gainus, and the text would be the psychology of early childhood. That's a good title. You can't yeah. miss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number three, who is Dr. Gazelle? I can't tell you. Number one, can you tell me who Anna Freud is? Uh, oh, she works in early childhood education in psychology. Number two, can you spell Dr. Spock's name? S-P-O-K-E-S. Thank you. Uh, number three, when you went to get your citation uh, at the White House, who else was with the president? Uh, there were six of us there. And who else was with the, on his side? 
Uh, well, <laughs> we were as a group. There were just six people. No, I mean, was anyone else from the White House along with him? Any, uh, was Yes Allinger there? Were there any no, press people? No, the Commissioner of Education and the uh, Governor of my state and... Um, Number one, what state do you come from? Wisconsin. And who was with you? Uh, my superintendent. Johnny I Carson. Think. Superintendent Johnny Carson. Uh, <laughs> number three, are they still stringing those lousy beads? <laughs> Number, number two, why, why the five-year uh, lapse between grammar school and high school? I lived in the country, and the high school was in the town ten miles away, and we had no public transportation in those days, and I didn't have the money to get there, so I worked until I was able to get my education. Dina. Uh, number one, uh, you hold a Bachelor of Science degree. Uh, what was your major subject? My major subject was kindergarten and primary. Kindergarten? Kindergarten, primary, yes. This is a science? Uh, it, it's a department. It comes under education, yeah, I see. Uh, number two, what was your master's thesis on? You have a master's in My arts. master's was in education, and the thesis was early childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. <laughs> you children had better mark your ballot now, <laughs> using any system you like. And when you do so, kindly vote for number one. Number two. Our number three. Everybody set? All ballots marked? Okay, Johnny, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted uh, for number three. I don't know why. I haven't been too fond of kindergarten since I flunked blocks and sand pile anyway. But I think number three. She looks the kindergarten type. Okay. Dina. Well, I'm with number one again, bud. I sound like Tom Poston. <laughs> But uh, it's a matter of elimination. Number two didn't know about how to spell Dr. Spock. Number three didn't know about Gazelle, so it left me with one. Right. Sam. Uh, I think number three knows a lot about Gazelle. Uh, number one gave the names of courses that don't usually appear that way in the catalog, in the childhood and stuff. There's much more detail than that. And number three looks like the type whom the teachers would pick as the typical loving uh, kindergarten teacher. I pick number three. And if you aren't, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Yes, because you've done well so far tonight. Two out of three. Yes. Kitty. Well, I voted for number one because, indeed, number two did not know how to... Dr. Spock and Dr. Gazelle, as far as laymen are concerned, are musts in childhood upbringing. And number three didn't know Dr. Gazelle. And I don't know what Froebel is. I think you made that up. No, no, he was one of the founders. So I voted for number one. One of the founders of the <laughs> <with> cheese. I know. <laughs> All right, there we have it. Now right down to the goal line, and we'll see right now whether we're right or wrong and what sort of truth is in us as we discover which one of these ladies is the real teacher of the year for 1961. So will the real Helen Adams please stand up? Sam Levinson just killed himself. <laughs> uh, no, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? I'm Bunny Day, and I'm the author of two books about fishing and cooking. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? What are the titles of these books that you've written? How to Cook Children. No. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, I love cooking uh, children. You love cooking children? <laughs> uh, catch them and cook them. And cook them. <laughs> <laughs> there are the names of those books. And now to hook them and cook them for the end here, number three, you got two of the votes, half of them. What is your real name and what do you do? Uh, I'm uh, Mildred Elder and I am the wife of Byron Elder who sat here before and the mother <laughs> of David Elder. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is very interesting because Son got one vote, that's more than dad who got none, and mama got the whole bit, and she got two votes. She can really lord it over the lot of them. We thank you very much. We're very proud to have you here. Checking the score, of course, we find that we're two and two. That means two incorrect at $250 each for a total of $500 from Dristan and a gift of the fine products made by the makers of Dristan for each of you. We thank you for being with us. Good night. Good luck to you. We owe a special vote of thanks to the Elder family from Columbus, Ohio, for the great job they did. So I'd like you to see them all together. Here they are.
Unfortunately, that's all the time we have tonight, except to tell you all that uh, in the Latham, New York area, our lovely Dina Merrill is about to open up there at the Colony Music Circus. It'll be tomorrow in the Voice of the Turtle. And Johnny Carson is going to MC the Miss Universe contest, lucky guy, on CBS July 15th. Oh, that's all. Good night, panel. Good night, night. Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Tristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This is Harry Morgan. Kara Williams and I hope you'll stay tuned to most of these stations for Gladys and Pete. He means Pete and Gladys. Just being diplomatic.